The NCAA is facing backlash after transgender female athlete Leah Thomas was nominated for the Woman of the Year Award. Now, the Daily Mail reports that women athletes, such as former tennis star Martina Navratilova and NCAA University of Kentucky swimmer Riley Gaines, are coming forward to condemn the University of Pennsylvania's selection of Thomas over many, quote, biological women athletes who competed last year. Navratilova tweeted, not enough biological women athletes, NCAA? What is wrong with you? Editor-in-chief at the Post-Millennial, Libby Emmons, join us now to weigh in. Libby, welcome to the show. Um, yeah, so what is the, I mean, what are people thinking about that? What do you think about this? What I think about this is pretty straightforward. I don't think it's reasonable or fair for women's college athletics to nominate a man to be woman of the year. It's absolutely absurd. Everyone who looks at this can see that it's absurd, not just the athletes, not just Navratilova, but while the championships were going on in Atlanta this year, parents were speaking out. They were doing it anonymously. Teammates were speaking out also anonymously. You had coaches at UPenn and people at the NCAA telling uh, competitors not to say anything about the unfairness here and to just go along with it. And I'm glad that now that we're in the summer season, athletes are finally able to speak out directly. I'm wondering if we're having to change the name of awards and instead have it be the biological woman of the year. You know, I mean, how um, it does seem... I guess it could just be athlete of the year, but I mean... Well, but then you would... Right. Well, right. And then that's that goes into the the you know the the i guess the claim that women are being erased that that the word is being erased that the category is being erased and then there would be something to that right if there was a if we changed it to just athlete right and and let's you know let's keep in mind why we have separate categories for men and women because in in athletics in in many most athletics um there's a you know wide divergence in athletic ability between men and women true that's true at every level that's certainly true at the level of elite competition this is you know this is done um so you can still have you have can have competitive swimming for women and and swimming for men and uh, you know now we're kind of eroding we're erasing the barriers between those categories and look there are people obviously people um who are losing out right libby Yeah, there's definitely people losing out. And I will say that I don't see any reason to change the language or our definitions just to suit men who would rather be viewed as women. I don't think that their feelings on this matter are particularly relevant. And we the reason too, as you said, that we have separate categories is so that there is fairness. And we've seen also that even if the trans athlete doesn't win the awards, doesn't take home the prizes like Laurel Hubbard didn't even place at the Olympics uh, coming up for the women's weightlifting team in New Zealand last year at the Tokyo Olympics. Laurel Hubbard didn't place, but Hubbard certainly took the places um, on that team of women who could have been competitive. So it's not even about winning or losing. It's about fairness for women's athletics. You know, and I I have no problem at all recognizing Leah Thomas as a woman. If Leah Thomas wants to present herself as a woman, be recognized as a woman, uh, Mm -hmm. check the boxes of woman, you know, when when forms are filled out and whatnot, I have no problem with that. And I think many people are fine with it and say, okay, you know, I have no problem with who you want to be and how you want to present yourself and, and recognizing that. But there is an issue when it comes to the these sorts of, of things like athletics. Um, there's some other there's other categories where people are starting to have some questions like about where do you put somebody who's trans who hasn't transitioned, um, who hasn't actually gone through the actual gender reassignment surgery. When that you know where do you put them in prison? Right? Do they go to the men's prison? Do they go to the women's prison? Um, there's a lot of different categories where these things become questions. And obviously, I think the sports one is the big one right now in the in the spotlight. And there is, as you mentioned, Robbie, a a biological difference. You cannot change your chromosomes. You can't change Mm -hmm. your biology. You can present however you would like. The world can help recognize you so that you can live in in an, an environment where you feel happy and free and supported. I have no problem with that, but you can't change your biology. And Leah Thomas, you know, we can't forget that Leah Thomas spent three years swimming and competing on the men's team as a male. And quite frankly, I believe even now, as a woman, Leah Thomas would still be allowed to compete 
on the men's side of swimming. I believe that men's sports in general are not actually men's sports. We have women's categories that are separated, that are meant for women to be able to compete against one another because women are different biologically. Um, but men's sports, if I'm not mistaken, anyone can actually compete. That's actually where anyone, including women, it's just that often women are not strong enough, fast enough you know, to, to compete alongside the men. But we've seen women uh, try to get into the NBA, for example, and some of the ones that were extraordinary were at times recruited in or, or tried out. We've seen this with football. We see this happen. So there is an open person's category for sports. It is called men's. Maybe they could change men's. I would, you know, maybe maybe men's could be changed mm-hmm. to, uh, you know, persons or all or just. Or you can have a, you know, you can have a separate. Um, I, I've spoken with um, an, an athlete, a skateboarder, uh, who who uh, uh, dealt with a trans person uh, because of the advantage uh, winning, you know, win again winning in the women's category. And the skateboarder said, you know, there could be actually in that sport already, there are enough individuals who are trans where you could have a separate trans category. Maybe that's the way to do it. Um, Uh, it, it, I don't know about that. I mean, I just, it's like, because that gets really, really complicated. And I just feel like, you know, because then what, you're going to have trans women and trans men competing in the same category, then you end up with the same sort of issues. So, I mean, I I think it it would be substantially more fair. We also have a female swimmer who is trans who competes on the women's team for the specific reason that there is more competition available for that swimmer on the women's uh, women's athletics Mm. in college. Otherwise, uh, I believe Isaac Hennig, I think, is the name. Um, I don't have it at the tip of my fingertips here, but I believe that's right, competes on the on the women's Wait, and you're well, saying and, and you're saying that this is a biological male who's transitioned to female or female no, biological this is female? A female who has had a voluntary double mastectomy who is competing who is undergoing I believe trans- okay who believe yeah competes on the women's team so is that- friends with thomas yeah. and also we have seen the skateboarding competitions there was recently a 29 year old male skateboarder who competed against 13 year old women skateboarders and took home the prizes. We've seen it in cycling, Emily Bridges, um, Veronica Ivy. We've seen these people take home the awards in women's competition and it doesn't seem reasonable. Also, if you look at the, you, you mentioned prisons, there was a biological male who was housed in the Edna Mann Correctional Facility in New Jersey, impregnated two women despite being on Estrogen does not have an interest in having, um, as you know, so-called bottom surgery, and was recently transferred out to a youth correctional facility because the crimes that this individual committed mm. happened while they were under age. Does, so we oh, are I seeing, see. you know, shocking unfairness across the board. There have been rapes in women's prisons in California, I believe, as well as Washington State. In California, in the women's prisons, they now distribute condoms because mm. um, this is what's going on. Sex is not allowed in the prison, but it's happening anyway. Well, We've seen in Nova Scotia pregnancies. We've seen in Australia. We've seen this all over the place. But I, think I can that at least understand. That say that men aren't women and allow women to have their own spaces and sure. legal designations. Sure. Uh, no, absolutely. I can at least understand the, ration- the rationale being that putting a trans... Um, a trans woman in with the men's prison could put them at serious risk of being sexually assaulted. I mean, there, obviously, there's going to be risks of sexual violence and other things either way. You probably again, this is probably a clear case where you need special accommodations for these people. Perhaps they don't fit into either population, so it's a little, it's a little bit thorny. But I, I can understand why they would not. Um, why there be issues in, in both ways. But, you know, you said something, Libby, before we actually started rolling the cameras today, that, you know, this is an issue that, this is like an 80-20 issue. This is something most people think that it is not fair for, uh, for, for, for trans people uh, who, had, who, have physio- who have physical advantages given the gender which, of their birth, that it's not fair for them to compete against um, other people. Or people in the category that they've they've, they've joined. Yeah, but, if you've you know, gone that's something puberty. conservatives feel, and right. that's something many many liberals feel as well. It's an 80-20 yeah. issue. It's a small number of people 
uh, who, re who really think this is a good idea, but apparently a small number of people that includes those who give out awards, I guess, at the NCAA. Yeah. And those in the Biden administration who don't seem to think that Title IX provisions should protect women's athletics anymore. I think part of the reason that it's um, such a such an easily identifiable issue for that 80 percent is because it's so visual. When you look at Leah Thomas up on the podium next to the women competitors, it's just very obvious that Thomas has physical advantages that these women do not have. And that is the case when we look at a number of these instances. Veronica Ivy, the cyclist, for example, stands head and shoulders ahead of, over, mm -hmm. taller than the competition. Um, we just see it. So I think that that's a big part of the reason why right. this is a, yeah. a clear cut issue for people. Yeah, hormone therapy doesn't change your, you know, it doesn't reverse your puberty that you went through. So if you grew to 6'1", 6'2", 6'3", and you've got, you know, the size of a man, I mean, that unfortunately, hormones cannot reverse that. And that, and so there's this argument that, well, but you're taking hormones, and so therefore you're evening out, and it just doesn't quite work that way. The science isn't there. Maybe at some point it would get there, but it's not there today. And I think then, you know, there's this obvious discrepancy and people are looking at this, even if they're very supportive of trans rights and but say that this is just, you know, one step a bit too far. Libby Emmons, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much. The winner, by the way, of the award will be named at the NCAA convention in January. So we'll continue to monitor the story and we'll have more rising right after this.